Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So today we'll see a one more algorithm in computer networks that is a link state routing algorithm. So this complete link state routing algorithm involves the two different phases. The first phase is a flooding phase and the second one is a routing path, finding the routing path, right? So these are the two different phases involved in this particular routing algorithm. So the first step is finding distances for neighboring routers so that means neighboring routers means the routers which are directly connected okay so first we have to find the distances so this will happen just by sending some hello packets to the neighboring routers so from that it will find the complete distance how long it it is linked to the particular neighboring router and the step two, once there is a distances, now find the link state. Find the link state table for every router. For every router. So we have to find out the link state table where it contains the neighboring routers along with the distance okay so this link state consists of so here we'll be having the neighboring routers and the distance okay so routers and distances and apart from these two fields will be available in this link state table so one is a sequence number one is a sequence number another one is a TLL so two more fields so here sequence number for every packet it gives one sequence number right so in order to find out the recently sent packet so because this type of tables will be updated frequently, right? So this is a dynamic. So one, for example, so this is a normal network. Let us consider normal network. So a packet should be sent from A to C, right? A to C. So there is a direct connection. So C is a neighbor, neighbor router of A, so directly it will be sent. If this particular link was not uh, properly connected or there might be some loss of the connection, then it will follow this path. Okay, it will follow this path through B. So in order to avoid this one, so which packet should be considered? So the sequence number will tell that the recently sent packet should be considered. Okay, the old packet should be discarded. So, the routing table will be keep on updating. Okay, keep on updating. So, in order to consider the re recent packet, so we have to use this sequence number. And coming to the TLL. TLL is nothing but a time to live. Time to live. And this TLL will be greater than zero. And we are saying that flooding, we will apply the flooding. That means we have to send every router will send the link state tables from one router to the another router. So flooding means simply passing to all the routers in the network. So A will send the link state table to D, B and C. Similarly, D will send the link state table to B and A. Similarly, B will forward the link state table to C. Like that, the, the link state tables will be 
flooded throughout the network so every router link state table will be flooded so where the flooding should be stopped that's a main question so this tll will be always greater than zero and once the packet is forwarded to another router this tll will be get decremented so if this tll value is equal to zero that implies that packet should be stopped for flooding okay so in order to avoid the infinite flooding we are going to use this tll field right so this is a step two finding the link state table and this link state table will be having the sequence tll and all the neighboring routers and corresponding distances so from the first step we will be getting the distances of the neighboring routers so in the second step we are creating the link state tables for every router and coming to the step three so just now we have discussed that the flooding will be done so flooding of link state table from one router to other so every router link state table will be flooded to throughout the network okay and then so every router will be having the link state table of all the routers so last step applying the discastra algorithm to find the shortest path so every router follows discastra algorithm so we know the discastra algorithm is to find the shortest path from source to destination so the same thing will be applied on every router to find the shortest path so this year these are the steps involved in link state routing algorithm so two phases flooding so this is completely comes with the first phase and this will be the second phase second phase routing path so this will be calculated with the help of this discastra algorithm following the discastra algorithm right now let us take an example so that we will see what happens let us take an example consider any random network so okay So this is a network, a random network. Uh, let us take the values. So let it be 2, 6, some 3, some 4, and some 2, 7, some 4, and 5. Right? So the first one, first step, every router will send the hello packets to the neighboring routers. So A will be sending hello packets to B, F, and finding the distance. So how far it was linked, right? Next, B will be sending the hello packets to A, E, and C. Similarly, C sends the hello packets to B, F, and D. And D sends the hello packets to C and E. And E sends the hello packets to B, D and F. F sends the hello packets to A, C and E. So by sending the hello packets to the, all the neighboring, so neighboring means directly connected routers. Okay. So we'll be having the distances. It will find the distances. This is the first step. Second step, finding the link state table. Okay. So it will find the link state table. Let us consider A. The link state table so it will be having the sequence and tll okay and here we'll be having a is directly connected to b with a distance to 
and it is directly connected to F with a distance 7. So next, the link state table for B, the two columns are a sequence and TLN and B and the neighboring routers of B are A with a distance of 2 and uh, C with a distance 6 and there is a third neighbor also that is E with 4 distance. So like this, so we need the link state table for all the routers. C, so B with a 6 and F with a 5 and D with a 3. And similarly, there is one more. So the first two fields are sequence and TLL. Okay. So D. Uh, with the C with the 3 distance and the E with the 4 distance. So 2 fields and E. So E is having 3 neighbors. One is F, B and D. So F, B and D. So F is connected with the 2 and E is connected with the 4. B is connected with the 4 and the D is connected with also 4 distance and one more so 2 fields for sequence and uh, TLL and F the node F is connected with the 3 one is A, C and E A, C and E A with the distance 7 and the C with the distance 5 and E with the distance 2 so all these are the link state tables of each and every router so these link state tables will be flooded this will be flooded throughout the network okay so that the sequence number will be used to consider the recently sent packet and tll is used for avoid the infinite flooding right if it is if it is zero or less than zero automatically that implies the packet should not be flooded further Okay, so now the last step, every router will be having the complete knowledge of every router, link state table. Okay, so A will be having the complete link state tables, B will be having the complete link state tables, similarly C, D, E and F will be also having the link state tables. Now, every router will follow the Dijkstra star algorithm to find the shortest path. Let us, let us take an example. Let us take an example, consider from A. Consider A. How to find the shortest path from A? So, this is an initial state. Initial state. Okay. Initial state. Now, consider A with a distance 0, it will find out the A. Okay. Now, with a distance 0, now A will be having two paths. So, A can link with B with a distance of 2 and A can send the packet to F with a distance of 7. So A is directly connected to B and F. So now consider the shortest distance among these two. So because these two are the neighboring routers of A. Okay. Now what is the shortest one? This one is the shortest one. Now you can see A, B. A, B. So A, B, you can observe from A and B, what are, what are the possible paths? C or E. So C with 8 or E with 6. You can observe A, B. Now pack, packet has been transferred from A to B. Now the packet can be further transmitted to C or E. So if the packet is transferred to C, what is the distance? 2 plus 6, 8. If the packet is transmitted to E, the distance is 2 plus 4, 6. Now consider the shortest part. So which one is the shortest? This one is the shortest. Now the next one is A, B, E. So now the packet is at E. A, B, E. Right? So let us consider this as a packet. Now A, B, G. So 
in this way it got now the possible paths you can see either f or d it can't be retransmitted to uh, i mean it can't be transmitted back to b right so it can be transmitted towards f or d so f or d if it is transmitted to f what is the distance here so 2 plus 4 6 6 plus 2 8 if it is transmitted to d what is the distance so 2 plus 4 6 plus 4 so which one we have to consider? We have to consider the shortest one. Shortest one. So the packet will be transmitted here. Right? Now A, B, E, F. So the packet is transferred from A, B, E, F. Obviously the packet can't be transmitted to A because A is already visited, right? So A is an initial state. It can't be sent to the initial state, right? So it should be transmitted towards C only. There is only one path. Okay. The F can't transmit the packet to A or it can't be tra I mean, transmitted back to E. So the packet should be transmitted from F to C. So only there is one path. What's the distance? 2 plus 4, 6. 6 plus 2, 8. 8 plus 5, 13. So the distance is 13. So it is retransmitted towards in this direction a to b b to e e to f and f to c now there is only one path so obviously we have to consider the same thing because if you are having the multiple paths then we have to consider the shortest path so here we are having only one path so we have to consider the same thing so a b e f c so obviously the c can't send to back to B because B is already visited and C should all can't be transmitted to F because C received the packet from F only so the C will transmit the packet to D okay transmit the packet to D so obviously D with a distance so 2 plus 4 6 6 plus 2 8 8 plus 5 13 plus 3 16 16 right now the path is a b e f c and d so from d now the packet is here now d from d the packet can't be transmitted to e because e is already visited packet can't be transmitted to c because c is already visited so once check whether all the routers has been visited or not so a b e f c d so in order to transmit the packet in the network this is the shortest path with a distance of 16 and you can check any other path obviously the distance will be more than 16 okay so the same thing we'll explain in the discus algorithm okay i'll post the discus algorithm link in the description so you can check the algorithm in that particular description box okay so this is how we are implementing the link state routing algorithm so two phases so flooding and routing two phases so flooding all the link state tables and every router will follow the discussed algorithm to find the shortest path right so hope you understood this one and if you are having any uh, doubts regarding this link state routing algorithm feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts if you really enjoyed my session, like my session, share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.